All right, all right, all right. We are live again. I am so excited. I've got Mary Simmons Maloney. It is so cool to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm thrilled to be here and I'm just grateful that you've asked me to be on the show. I watched Tammy's show yesterday and she is just a girl boss. So I don't know how I'm gonna follow her show, but I'm gonna give it a good shot. <laughs> Well, we've got so much to talk about, and I know you're just going to drop some some value here for our audience. So why don't we do this? One thing that you and I were talking a little bit before we came on air here, and you were telling me, and I didn't know this, but you are from you moved from Arkansas to San Diego. So tell me all about that. Uh, so I grew up in a small town in Arkansas, Southern girl, Southern values, and. I joined the Navy out of high school. And so the, okay. Navy, the Navy brought me to San Diego I um, after boot camp. And I was stationed on a ship. I did three tours, served in Desert Storm, uh, and then was transferred to Top Gun. And I did my last tour at Top Gun wow. and, and got out at eight and a half years. Um, and my husband is a 20 year Navy diver. We obviously met in the Navy. Uh, and so we were fortunate enough that the remainder of his career, we were able to stay in San Diego. So uh, we've been fortunate to be in San Diego all this time. And gosh, I've been here now 30 years. God, that makes me old, but yeah, <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> wow. So that is such a cool story. So, I mean, obviously, do you still have family in Arkansas? Uh, no, uh, family in Illinois and um, Seattle, and my husband's family is here. So, uh, and our we have uh, one son here. We have a daughter in Portland, and then we have a daughter who's graduating college, and she's actually uh, in Rome right now, in Rome, Italy, finishing oh, up wow. school. So, yeah, wow, wow, wow. that is so cool. So, you know. Um, why don't we start it off by, tell, tell me how long you've been doing real estate now in San Diego. So I have been in real estate for going on 15 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and the last 10 of that, it's kind of an interesting story, even how I got into real estate. Uh, I like to say real estate got into me. Uh, but um, I, I, after the military, I have a background in marketing and branding and sales and was fortunate enough to work with some very large companies, Kellogg's, Nickelodeon, and uh, the last was Jim Davis, the creator of Garfield. And so mm -hmm. I, I really like to say I cut my branding chops on Garfield's whiskers because <laughs> those people are so incredibly wicked smart when it comes to marketing and branding. And so I learned a ton traveling back to Indi Indiana and visiting with their team and working with their with their company. After that company I was with received a large cash infusion from the Adolf Coors Foundation. I found myself commuting to Denver, which obviously isn't great for anyone. I had a mm -hmm. six year old at the time. And so my husband wasn't going to move east of the 15 freeway, which if you know anything about San Diego, um, he wasn't moving east of the 15. So mm -hmm. um, decided to stay here. And then, um, you know, the company obviously wanted me to move there. So long story short, I found myself not being able to get a job. Uh, I was too expensive. Uh, in my 30s, I was too old already. Uh, and <laughs> they could hire two college kids for, you know, the price of that uh, I was worth. So mm -hmm. I found myself going back to school um, on my GI Bill to finish my law degree. And a girlfriend took me to lunch for my birthday mm -hmm. and said, you don't want to be a lawyer, which is why Tammy and I have so much in common. And um, she said, I'm getting my real estate license. You should get your real estate license and put all that sales and marketing experience to work and we'll go do the deals. And my husband is a broker. He'll do all the paperwork. And I said to her, I said, Kelly, I am not driving around with my face on the side of my car. That is not happening. And she was like, no, 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 you can do, you can market yourself any way you want. And I said, you're joking. Like people, cause we had bought new construction house homes. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, you're, you're joking. Like people choose to put 
their face with their dog on the side of their car as a way to market themselves as a business. Mm -hmm. And so it, it started me down a path and a journey of, you know, my husband said it, we had just moved into a brand new community. He said, you know, you love houses, you love design, you love the community we live in. Why don't you give it a shot? What's the worst that can happen? And so mm -hmm. I took my first listing uh, from a neighbor uh, at Bunko, believe it or not, um, in February of 2004 and haven't looked back. So I'm going on 15 years pretty soon. Wow. You know what's so cool about your story is that it, when I listen to you, I hear how every step in your life, um, you, the, in your journey, the things that you've learned, you're now – you're taking those experiences and plugging them into your real estate business, um, your sales and marketing background. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I've, I've been on your website. I know that the, that, uh, that active and retired military play a big part um, in, in your business. And I want to get into that a little bit more, but mm -hmm. I just think it's so interesting how like it is, it is this, it's, it's like this big jambalaya, right? This big um, right. pot of like in these different experiences that have been infused into your business. And that's, what's so cool about it. Yeah. Um, People don't really realize all the aspects that we do as real estate agents because growing up and it's one of the reasons I joined the military because I wanted to be a nurse. Uh, at one point, I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a broadcast journalist. And now with video, I get to be all of those things in real estate. Right. Um, yeah. And the one thing I never wanted to be was a psychologist, but <laughs> you have to do that in real estate anyway, right? Um, I don't pick paint colors and I don't give tax advice, but um, yeah, you get to be a lot of, there's a lot of facets to real estate that I don't think people really realize when they're looking you know, at this as a career. And so it, you do get to do, and you get to put a lot of your life experiences to work in real estate, whether that be, you know, we have people that come from marketing and sales backgrounds, uh, people that are great nurturers, um, you know, and they're like the little mother duck and they've got their little first time home buyers and they, you know, uh, get them through the process. And so all of those things really do add up to to adding to someone's real estate career and the flavor in which they drive their business. You know, the military taught me discipline and consistency uh, and then, of course, sales and marketing and then. I'm pre-law just enough to be dangerous. So I love contracts and getting and real, you know, getting figuring out contractual things. Uh, so, and then of course, being an entrepreneur, you know, that entrepreneurial spirit when you're in real estate leads you to want to open your own brokerage and do things your own way and thinking that you can do them better than what is being offered in the current marketplace. And, you know, that that's the point of marketing, right? Is to find a need within an industry and develop a product or a service that fulfills that need. And so as entrepreneurs, you, I think that's what spurred this whole indie brokerage movement about 10 years ago. And I like to say we were indie when indie wasn't cool. Um, but, um, you know, that kind of happened for me by happenstance as well. I was approached by the developer of the master plan community that we had bought in when I first got into real estate and they said, you know, we really love what you're doing with your marketing and your branding. It's very different. Would you talk to us about opening a resale office? And so for the first three years, I was the managing agent and operator of a wholly owned subsidiary of HomeFed Corporation called Santa Leo Hills Realty. And so that kind of started that indie uh, journey, if you will, and then in the beginning of 08, uh, I was having breakfast with the president of HomeFed and we were discussing because it was coming up on a shareholder meeting. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, we're hearing a lot of squawk on the street out of New York about Lehman Brothers and countrywide toxic debt. And we're not really happy about the profit potential for the realty company this year. And I said, so sell it to me. And he said, well, I just told you it's not going to make money. I said, so I should get it really cheap then. <laughs> and, and so for the next 90 days, uh, we worked out an acquisition um, and we got into some trademark issues because the name of the community is Santa Leo Hills. And so we had to change the name very quickly and um, these things. And so uh, 
you know, I, I was reading something that, you know, when a door opens, you, you have to stick your foot in it and you have to take risk and you have to put yourself out there and, and really go for what it is that you want in life. And, and my grandmother always told me, you can do anything you want to do. And so I didn't know anything about running a real estate company. I just knew that there was an opportunity and I thought we could do something that was very boutique. I think that was kind of a buzzword at the time, 10 years mm -hmm. ago, you know, this boutique experience and delivering a boutique brand. Um, and so that kind of led me down that indie journey. And uh, it wasn't something that I set out to do, but the, the opportunity presented itself. And I certainly, you know, did, did take it. And that, that was kind of the same thing that I felt about EXP. This this opportunity presented itself, and I just felt like, you know, I I can't miss it. I bought a lot of property for investors during short sale days, and was investing all of my money in the real estate company to keep the doors open during the downturn. And so I felt like I missed that opportunity. Um, and when Kyle and Daniel and I really sat down to dive into it. I came home and I told my husband, I said, we can't miss this one. We just can't miss it. And so mm -hmm. um, that opportunity and entrepreneurial spirit has kind of for, you know, pushed me uh, during my real estate career for sure. That is so good. I mean, that's good stuff. So I, I want to rewind just a little bit here because there's so much to dive into there. Um, you know, when I when you and I talked yesterday, or we, we were we were DMing back and forth, and 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 when you when you sent over your numbers, um, I and I thought a thousand deals, five hundred million dollars worth of sales, and I'm thinking, wow. You know what comes to mind is pillar of consistency, right? And so you've just run this business that's just been consistent year after year after year, and so I'm curious. How have you done that? What do you think are the major contributing factors to running a business of consistency like that over the years? Well, we actually grew, right? Um, those those are our indie brokerage numbers since we started mm -hmm. Hometown Realty. So my career prior to that, before becoming Hometown Realty. And, you know, running the team and the indie brokerage, you know, truly it was having the right people on the bus. Mm -hmm. and having the right people that were hungry, humble, and smart. Sometimes people didn't turn out to be one of those three um, in the end, but certainly starting out being hungry, humble, and smart, smart, and then having a process and a system that people could plug into, whether mm -hmm. that was, you know, they'd been in the business four or five years and just weren't seeing the, the numbers that they wanted, the downturn in the market, uh, we were ahead of the short sale curve. I think as leaders, we have to constantly have our head up and be watching the trends and watching where mm -hmm. the market is going so that we can steer our ship. And being small and being nimble is kind of like being a frigate when you're in a task force. It takes mm -hmm. a long time to turn an aircraft carrier, which I kind of equate to big box brokerages. Sure. It takes a long time to turn that ship, whether it's technology or marketing or or whatever it is, but when you're small and nimble, you know you can introduce a new technology, you can launch a new campaign, you can do those things and be nimble and quick. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we were first to introduce some technologies in our local market, online uh, buyer acquisition, that sort of thing. That just staying in front of those markets, we were able to attract great agents. That you know, some have gone, um, and I wish them well. But the time that you do have these people on your team, you really have to invest in them and create systems that people can plug into that will create sustainability and predictability in a business. And, you know, there, there are a couple of things I wish I'd have done differently. I wish I'd have hired a coach sooner. Um, and uh, I wish I had stayed and invested in one CRM and kept that one CRM the whole time um, and hired an assistant sooner. But, you know, uh, having served a thousand families and sold, you know, as you said, over 
over a half a billion dollars in real estate in the last 10 years. Yes. It's been a great ride, but constantly putting people, planet and process and, and purpose before profit, I think is what has sustained our brand and has kept us, has kept the business flowing even when there have been shifts in the market. Yes, that is that is so good. I mean, I, I think the the part that resonates with me there and what you said is that you've really you've built through people, right? You've you've it's like the old Zig Ziglar adage, right? You'll get what you want if you help another enough other people get what they want. And it seems right. like you've really kind of you, you you've you've done that in your business. So I'm curious when you got into real estate, did you know I assume you got in just like everyone else, right? Where you you were the the you were a solopreneur. You met with buyers. You met with sellers, right? And you did that. Right. When did you figure out? Um, well, first of all, did you get in the business with the intention of starting a team, or did you find out you could start a team after you got in the business? So I I was just an individual agent helping sellers, helping buyers, and I still um, help sellers and buyers today. It's more of my past clients and referrals um, sure. at, at this point, but. I, I think it keeps me relevant by being in the trenches with my people. Um, I understand what they're going through. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hearing the conversations from sellers and buyers. I'm able to, you know, boots on the ground, be in the trenches and, and really help to, to navigate the ship because of the feedback that we're getting. But, you know, when I was in, in my first company at Santa Leo Hills Realty, they decided to bring on um, another agent because our business was growing and I thought it was the right time. And so uh, when when we started Hometown Realty, um, you know, it was a matter of we needed agents, um, mm -hmm. our brand, everything that we were doing. We just couldn't service um, I know that sound, I don't want to sound braggadocious, but you know, we just, couldn't, we, we just couldn't fully serve because this is a, we really concentrate on a small 6,000, it's now 6,000 homes. It didn't start out that way, but we really concentrate on a geographic neighborhood mm -hmm. and um, you know, we needed more agents. And so we started building a team slowly and um, at the height of our team, our best year, um, you know, we did 133 million and we still only had six agents, but our wow. agents were in, you know, and our average price point is about 520. Um, mm -hmm. so at the time, um, and so, uh, you know, just highly productive and creating again, those systems and processes. So we had three staff supporting six agents and, uh, you know, we're not perfect. Um, we, uh, went through an implosion. Uh, we grew so fast that we weren't keeping up with the needs of our agents, and uh, there was there was different there was different opinions as to how to do that. And so, um, you know, over the last eighteen to twenty four months, um, you know, I've been in a rebuild, and it's very interesting when you're when you're able to step back and and do a SWOT analysis and really decide. What were we doing right? What were we doing wrong? What do we need to do differently? Um, and and come out bigger and better. Uh, but EXP to me, um, and we can get into and we can get into all that as to why I chose to take my indie brokerage there. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really allowed us to continue to scrap systems and processes that weren't working, and really continue to concentrate on. How can we help our agents be more productive? And yeah. at the end of the day, if you help your agents be more productive, your company will grow and blossom. Like you said, yeah. help people get what they want and you'll get what you want. Yeah. You know, I love the fact that you're still, I, I love this, the fact that you're still involved uh, in your business because you talked about remaining relevant. And I think there's this stigma, um, especially the high producers that, you know, that we're supposed to graduate out of the business, right? And we're supposed right. to be at the seventh level position. And if you're not there, shame on you. You know, you haven't reached the pinnacle yet. Mm -hmm. When in reality, some of us enjoy doing that, right? And we yeah. enjoy we enjoy getting our hands dirty with our team. So I'm, yeah. I love that fact about you is that you, you use that word relevant. And that is, that, is, that is so powerful because, you know, when you're in the trenches with your team, 
it's you earn a, there's just a different level of respect there you know what i mean because they know you're out grinding and and they're out grinding as well right so so i like that you yeah, did that I, but I, on the ahead. phone we're making calls um you know everything um and i i do think some people you know i've watched people and you know i i applaud them for the businesses that they built and you know they're now more in a management sort of role um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure they have to be when they're, when they're doing that amount of transactions. But like you said, I, I really enjoy the process. I enjoy, you know, it's stressful at times. Don't get me wrong, but I, I do enjoy the process. I, I enjoy selling. So you talked about also, um, over the last 18 to 24 months, you'd mentioned, um, it, on your growth journey, having kind of some bigger challenges and, and, you know, the reality of it is we all go through that, right? We all... Mm -hmm. It, it is always about is it, it it's those are the opportunities usually for our our our, our largest growth right that's right. when we're that's when we're growing that's that's when we find out who we really are right right and so talk about if you can um, what you learned from those experiences specifically oh gosh um, you know when you're when you're in any difficult situation whether that be personally or professionally you know it sucks at the time right but yeah. then. Like you're saying, when you have the opportunity to sit back and really analyze, it's been the greatest thing that's happened to me professionally, honestly. Um, and at the time, it hurt, it sucked. Betrayal is not good. But you know, I I learned I I needed to be more involved in the financial stewardship of my company. I needed to make adjustments faster. I needed to be able to pivot. Um, and, and one of the biggest things was I had to let go of the fear of failure. And because that had me crippled um, because people, I, I got to the point when you're growing so fast and people are watching you, I, I had such a fear of failing and letting people down and I felt responsible um, you know, for people's families and for the things that they wanted for their families. And mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to fail in the eyes of my peer community, whether that be yeah. my coaching community or, you know, the local San Diego peer community, because, you know, when you start growing, we were the fastest growing um, boutique brokerage in North County, San Diego. We were number one in the Wall Street Journal ratings. And you know, I, that just had me crippled that, you know, I, I couldn't fail. Like, God, what would people think of me if it all fell apart? And you know what? It did. Um, and so my biggest growth has come from learning that failure is a bruise. It's not a tattoo. Mm -hmm. And some of, like you said, the biggest growth for me is now making all of the decisions being in in charge of the financial stewardship of my company and and going big and no apologies you know uh, letting go of the fear of failure letting go of the fear of the opinions of others and truly going for and running a business the way i want to run a business and um you know uh, being an indie is tough it's tough when when you have to you know be responsible for reviewing the files being responsible for the bureaucracy being responsible for the compliance being responsible for the liability oh my gosh the sleepless nights um and so you know all of those things uh led me to to the exp opportunity and it, i just couldn't find how it couldn't help me grow this business you know bigger, stronger, faster, um, because of the way I was looking and the impact that I had chosen to make. Our hometown realty and our geographic office, um, the community support that we have, the clients that support us, you know, it's amazing. And, and we've been here for 15 years and invested in our community and, and put people in purpose uh, before the profit. And, uh, coming out, I needed a passion project. I was coming off of the death of my mother. I was coming off of the implosion of my company. And um, a friend alerted me to some predatory practices that were going on in the military space in San Diego when it came to real estate. And so 
we launched Hometown Veterans and we have an office in Oceanside outside of Camp Pendleton. And that has really, you talk about people and purpose, um, you know, that has really been a passion project of mine. And so uh, looking to expand, um, you know, uh, that was another reason that the EXP opportunity made so much sense. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when you come, when you start digging your way out and then you start picking up momentum, you realize that, oh my gosh, like I got it here. I had a little setback, but now I'm ready to take it here. And, mm -hmm. you know, embracing that and what did I learn? Um, and it, it's been, it's definitely been a growth journey the last two years. Yeah. Failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a, a, I love that. I said it. There you go. <laughs> Make it a so, t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's a good hashtag, by the way. It's failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. So, man, thank you for your candor, by the way. I, I just I love it when people are just able to open up and and share uh, because most people want to come on here and they want to talk about how great everything is, right? They just want to talk about you know they want to talk about I do all, all these transactions and and you know we're so profitable and you know at the end of the day it's not all puppy dogs and roses you know what I mean and and you know we've had failures in our business uh, where we just didn't do everything right so I appreciate you being able to share that uh, in your honesty and I, I, I because I think that you're allowing other people to to go out and make you know mistakes and it's okay right we know that it's yeah. okay and you it's are now stronger harder. from that yeah, experience. Absolutely. And I think it's it's also harder for female entrepreneurs um, to to take risk. Um, it, you know, uh, even now today, female real estate agents only make 85 cents to every male realtor dollar. And um, it, you know, being a female and stepping into business a lot of female entrepreneurs are even more scared about making a mistake and they have a bigger uh, fear of other people's opinions of them, whether that be spouses or parents or, or whatever, because, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the era, I'm 50, um, you know, we grew up that, you know, girls do this and boys do this. Um, but entering the military at 17, you know, I entered a very male world in 1986, sure. let me tell you. Um, and so, you know, you, you get tough and female entrepreneurs don't have the same access to leadership. They don't have the boys club at the country club that they can talk about business problems with. Female entrepreneurs don't have the same access to capital that men do. Um, but, your largest ownership of indie brokerages is female. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the leadership opportunities aren't there in the big boxes, the access to C-suite opportunities. Tell me how many women are in a C-suite opportunity in a, a major big box brand. But women have ideas, women are creative, women are nurturers, women, they really know how to get shit done. And- I love it. They, they honestly step out into that indie brokerage role because we feel like, hey, we can do this better, you know? Um, and so it, it really is challenging. And if anything, you know, I've, I've started a little group called Real Estate and Rosé here in San Diego to bring women together, to talk about women in real estate, to empower other women, you know, step up, woman up. It's it's an amazing opportunity and journey. And there's actually an initiative here in California by the California Association of Realtors called Woman Up. And we're addressing these issues of women in real estate, but the fear of failure is what holds a lot of women back from you know, stepping into uh, an ownership role or a leadership role or a team leader role. And the collaboration and support through EXP, I'm hoping will just open this this channel for women to see that you've got support and you've got collaboration and we're going to be behind you. And uh, it, it's been a really exciting ride so far. So it, it really is a, a big thing in, in my world too, um, supporting women in, in real estate. That is so cool. I was actually, um, I was on my way back from an appointment and I was, 
uh, there's a podcast by a guy, guy named Ed Milet. You may or may not know who that is. He lives actually in, I think, Orange County, Newport Beach. Um, he's a motivational speaker, but he was interviewing a gal named Rachel Hollis. Do you know who that is? I haven't heard that name. She, she's an author. And she, um, anyway, she was, they were just talking about that, right? About like the expectations of women uh, in business. Um, but there are some amazing facts out there that I don't think most people know that like actually now there, I think roughly 70% of uh, new businesses that are starting up are, are being started by women right now. And then like uh, of the ones that are successful, women represent 77% of those. Yes. So like it is definitely, you, you said something yesterday um, when I was uh, interviewing, when I was interviewing Tammy and you said girl boss. And that, that is like that, that, I mean, that's a true representation of, of mm -hmm. what I think you guys represent. You know what I mean? Cause you guys are out there doing it like at a different level, man. Like you guys have found a different gear for sure. And, and so I, I love that, you know, I can tell like you, you totally changed when you started talking about that. I don't know if you noticed <laughs> that or not, but like your, your, your expressions change, your face change, your tonality change. And so I can say, I can tell that that's something that you're very passionate about. So moving well, I, forward I think with women too. I mean, Tammy and I have talked about this. Women are willing to open up. If you will, there's no ego. Like, you know, women check their ego at the door. Um, whereas you talk about a lot of people just want to talk about, oh, look how many transactions we did. You know, look at look at our numbers. OK, let's talk about your profitability. I know right. a lot of people that do a <laughs> shit ton of business and are broke. Right. So, um, you know, I think we're willing to say this is my challenge. Um, you know, I need help. Um, and so I think. I don't think a lot of guys are willing to do that, right? Right. Um, and so, it, it's, it's the whole machismo, machismo thing. It's the you right, know, I, I, they, right. and that's a danger for men, though, too. You know what I mean? That's you know, there are there are certain. I think there are certain fears. There are certain limitations for all of us, uh, and certainly it, it has been um, more challenging for women, uh, no doubt about it. I mean, that's a statistical fact. But, you know, we, we all have these things that are holding us back from actually being who we are. And I think we're getting into a time, especially here in Utah right now, where we're trying to draw that out of people. Right. We're, tr we're trying to tell them to express themselves that, you know, when you make yourself vulnerable, that's when you're you have your biggest opportunities for growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I'm working on that with my coach and um, you do. You have to say these are my weaknesses and these are my strengths. And, you know, I'm, I'm really about outsourcing my weaknesses <laughs> and continuing to build on my strengths. And, and uh, I think if we, if we continue the conversation and get more women to the table and keep elevating and keep this conversation at the forefront of some of, you know, the, the events that are going on, um, mm -hmm. you know, a, uh, a year ago, I was at a vendor conference and there was not one woman keynote speaker. And it was like, really? Like you couldn't yeah. find one badass girl boss in this industry to talk about this subject, you know? Yeah. Um, and we brought it to their attention and they didn't even realize. Like they oh honestly, and, and I know them, I think they're super authentic people and they didn't even realize. Um, and so it, I think we just have to keep talking about it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. No doubt about it. And, you know, so I'm, I'm interested to see, obviously, you, you, you've you achieved success at, at the highest level in real estate. I mean, you know, whether you whether you want to admit it or not, um, you you have achieved that. And, and obviously, you know, we still want to keep going. Right. We still have a lot of work to do. We know that. Right. We can right. still change other people's lives. But, you know, so there's this narrative in real estate that when you've opened your own brokerage, right, that you've reached the pinnacle, right? There's right. nothing like you're writing your own checks, essentially. Right. Right. So I'm curious to you, like you talked about all the responsibilities that you have, though, as like all the all the liabilities, responsibilities that you have as an independent broker. Mm -hmm. So like, and you lived that for a while, right? And and then, right. so you find out about this, this company, right? And you find out um, that there are people moving over and, and you start to wonder, and then the idea is presented to you. Uh, you hear about this EXP company and then what happens to you? So for me, I had heard about EXP and 
honestly, I didn't give it much thought. Like I saw Glenn sure. Sanford at the at an Inman conference. Um, I think it was the year I was named to the Inman 101 list. But I, I didn't give it much thought. Like there was exit, there was exp. I was like, you know, just didn't give give it much thought. Right. And then in this journey over the last two years, it and at my age, I decided, you know what? I just don't want to do stuff that I don't enjoy doing anymore. And reviewing files, I just don't enjoy that. Um, and so I was looking to how could i and and we had also been approached by a, a a larger company to acquire us and you know i figured out that that wasn't very fun and not very responsibility mm -hmm. compliance bureaucracy so that i could invest more time in my people my team my clients my community how could i be out there making a bigger impact and difference in my industry uh, going to conferences, speaking, doing other things. And so I started looking around and I would either have to give up my brand to get, um, you know, to, to move my team somewhere else, which mm -hmm. I just wasn't willing to do at any cost. Uh, Cause we had, you know, we've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in 15 years building a brand in our, in our area, in our community. And I'm very proud of that. And so uh, either to get rid of expense, because our e &O was climbing so high here in California, you know, corporate taxes are crazy in California, um, and general liability, workman's comp, I mean, just the expenses of running um, from, a, you know, the back end perspective of liability. In looking at different companies of where could I get rid of liability and where mm -hmm. could I get rid of expenses? both were just not an option for me mm -hmm. um either due to having to give up my brand or you know for various reasons and so we were at we were at a coaching event in palm springs and kyle popped in to one of the groups i can't remember what it was and he said is anyone interested in having an exp conversation and an exp mastermind and i'm like because Kyle and I, um, although we were frenemies for a few years, uh, which is a funny story, I I took over his office and, and redecorated and he put my house up for sale. So that's a whole nother uh, conversation um, and story. But um, I had a, a great deal of respect for Kyle because I had watched him um, and we were, you know, slightly competitive. Um, and I had watched him build an amazing, team and business. And so, of, of course, I always think every conversation is worthwhile, no matter what, every conversation is worthwhile. And so when he said, do you want to have a conversation? Is, is anybody interested in having this conversation? I definitely raised my hand. I went and there were a handful of people there, I think 10, 15 people. But after like a week later, I, I got online and watched every video I could find. Sure. Um, some not so great but um you know just tried to find and learn as much as i could and then about a week later kyle said kyle sent me a text and said are you serious about learning more about exp and i said i am how about you and he said um let's meet and it ended up very quickly within a week's time uh kyle and daniel and i all got together and decided uh, to move all of our businesses together um, at the same time and form the fast forward movement. And wow. I think it's a great mix. You know, Kyle and I come from an indie background. I come from a female perspective. Um, Daniel, obviously, number one team in Southern California for KW. And, you know, we, we collectively, um, you know, I think we each have different strengths. Uh, we like to say Daniel's the money guy, Kyle's the tech guy, and I'm just the pretty face um, of our movement. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, we each come from a different perspective. We each have different strengths. And we really thought, gosh, if we put our three minds together, what an impact we could not only have on collaborating and helping other agents, but 
also our industry, you mm -hmm. know, and real estate in San Diego and elevate um, the consumer experience through better education and, and you know, better training for, for agents that are on the ground. And so it very quickly came together and, and we formed the fast forward movement. And I would say my only regret is not having joined DXP sooner. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So, you know, what, tell me what, what did your, what did the structure of your, your brokerage, your team look like at that time? So when all this stuff is going on, right, you're doing the investigating as, as the team lead, right? Right. What, what did, what did the structure of your business look like then? Uh, so still we have uh, six agents and one part-time admin outsourced everything else, graphics artists, uh, transaction coordination, all of that. Um, and so nothing changed. That was the beauty. Nothing changed for our consumers. Nothing changed for our community. Nothing changed for our team. It is still business as usual. We're still doing business the way we want to do business. Um, you know, we just added an additional logo to our brand and our look and our theme. Our mm -hmm. office is still the same. We're still committed to the same. Um, things within our community that we provide. Um, and at the same time, now, I think we have an opportunity to provide better service, sure. um, you know, more time investment, and from a financial standpoint, as, as well as, um, you know, the, the time to invest. So, you know, really, nothing has changed for our team. Uh, we are looking to grow now. Um, and I think we're at the right time to grow. And uh, so, so far, it's been amazing. Um, we're, we're in about six months now. And, you know, I've got more time to invest in my team and my clients and my community and my industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we're saving money and we're able to put that money and invest it into other parts of our business. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really get, I, I really wasn't focused on the revenue share um, and the opportunity there. As mm -hmm. much as Kyle and Daniel were, I was looking to solve other problems in my business, which was getting the liability off my plate, getting the, you know, file reviewing and that sort of thing. And, uh, but the expansion opportunity was big on my plate for expanding sure, sure. my military brand into other military markets. That was, that was a big reason I came to EXP. And so, but, but our team hasn't changed. Um, I no longer have to cut as many checks, which is great. Um, so just everything has gotten better, uh, in my opinion. And but at the end of the day, if you know down the road at my age, um, you know, looking at retirement and looking at what is the next evolution of of my team, I would have never been able to offer my team stock options. I would have never been able to offer my team an ability to have an additional revenue stream. Um, mm -hmm. The training that's available to them now, pretty much, you know, we've got agents at different experiences and different levels, and now they can pretty much go in and get whatever training they need based on their, their point in their business. You know, do you need open house training? Do you need a script training? Do you need whatever training it is? So it's allowed me to better serve them and to just better serve serve our clients as well. But I love what you just said. I, I think that I, I want people to really hear that because I think one thing that was a disconnect for us um, at Keller Williams was the fact that um, while Keller Williams is a great company and we loved, we loved our time there, the training there was only as good as the person teaching it. You know what I mean? And so, and, and so what the, the, I think, what I want people to hear about what you said is the fact that people can go into EXP world right. and these classes are not being taught by people who don't know what they're doing. I mean, these <laughs> classes are being taught by some of the top right. real estate agents across the United States. And there's people there from every state, right? There's right. people there that have just started into the business. There's people like you and I in there who we all have something to learn. But the, the right. so the disconnect at Keller Williams was, my instructor was only as 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 good as the, that they, they could offer, right? At, mm -hmm. at that location, that's it, right? right? That's all they had. But the instructors at in EXP World are some of the top real estate agents 
and team leaders across the United States. And so that is such a powerful thing because I think people get, I think people get caught up um, and people understand, I think the, the importance of training. I mean, we know that the, right. the map is always more important than the treasure, right? And so I, I think that when, when you, when you talk about training and, and Keller Williams claims to be, you know, a training company and I get it. I think they, they try really hard to train their agents. And I think that that's a great thing. I think it's probably the second best training company uh, next to us now, but I, I, I really want people to connect with that because you, you know, when you, when you are an agent, training is critical, right? And you talked about, you've got agents that are just starting into the business and then agents who are further along and those agents right are able to plug in their businesses where exactly where they're at, right? That's exactly um, right. And when you take technology cool. and you utilize technology to scale efficiency, that's when businesses uh, end up being in a force multiplier. Like you can't help but grow because now, you know, if I have somebody that needs contract training, but contract training isn't on our training schedule for two mm -hmm. more months, Whereas they can just go and get the exact training they, that they need. And I'm so excited. You know, they're talking about at, they're building EXP University. Like I always have to step back and go, okay, we're still in infancy. Like, you know, um, this is exciting. And it, 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 it kind of re-energizes you anytime you're, you're part of a startup. But the, the idea that our training, our university will be kind of like a YouTube repository that yeah. you can search by keyword and watch at any hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Like that sort of force multiplier is only going to grow your business. Your agents yeah. are going to be better. They're going to get exactly what they need to be better, faster. Um, it, it, it's just super exciting. So powerful. And so talk about one thing I want to talk about before we end this is I want to talk about like once you made the decision, how did you approach your team? <laughs> Honestly, not very well. Um, I was so excited and things were happening so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, that a couple of my people actually found out during my Facebook Live announcement with Kyle and Daniel, um, which was not <laughs> ideal, um, but it was just all happening so fast. And I'm very, very, um, I did lose a couple of people, um, but I don't mm -hmm. think it had anything to do with the move to EXP. I think that was just convenient, um, okay. but um, it, and, and that's the honest truth. Um, but, you know, I, I am grateful to my team that they do trust me as a leader and know that I would never, ever do anything that I did not believe was going to truly be beneficial for them. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, uh, as Kyle and I said, you know, we just couldn't find any holes in this opportunity. And as an indie brokerage, what was the worst that could happen? We just yeah. go back to doing what we were doing and take right. the EXP logo off our sign, you yeah. know? Um, and so I think, you know, we've, we've struggled a little bit, um, you know, and, and I, I love that EXP has recognized that for larger teams, and the, uh, you know, the volume that we do, they've made adjustments and created a team, a transaction team just for us. Uh, they, you know, they, they've developed team onboarding, which is fabulous. fabulous. So some of those just clerical, logistical process hiccups we've worked through. Um, but, it, you know, I, I think the team is happy uh, with, with the move and things are efficient now and things are flowing and the ability to just, pop into the world and get something done um, has just been, it's been amazing. And it's really honestly helped us to define our processes and systems even more. Mm -hmm. um, because, it, you know, when you have to have processes and systems in order to do volume. I mean, that's just yeah. the way it is. And when you think about, you know, they are processing 
thousands upon thousands of transactions every single day, um, you know, we've embraced it, you know, okay, you want us to do it this way? It's not the way we've always done it, but that's the way we're going to do it. You want right. us to get that disclosure? A absolutely. We'll add it to our list. Like it's just really helped us. And so now the team is kind of in a cadence and you know, it's like, I need this, I need this, I need this. Like we're just, you know, it's, it's really moving along and, and it's, and it's made us more efficient too. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I have so enjoyed this. Like I, this is, um, you know, I had Tammy on yesterday and, and I, I yeah. felt really good about that conversation. And, and um, I found out also through Tammy that, you know, you were one of the uh, people that helped um, shed some light on EXP uh, to her. And so mm -hmm. obviously um, I'm sure she is forever grateful for you. And and I wanted to I wanted to comment on one more thing because you talked about meeting her um, through the ferry organization. Is that correct? You guys did some coaching together. Yeah. And her and Kyle and I are all in team plus. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how did you get involved in that? Uh, honestly, I met Tom Ferry through a neighbor. Um, I was one of those people who, you know, I don't need to be motivated. Um, I didn't, I didn't go to <laughs> seminars and that sort of thing. Uh, but a neighbor of mine was actually a coach for Tom Ferry. And I had started doing short sales, gosh, back in 2006. Mm -hmm. And this was when the short sale negotiator would call you. Oh yeah. Mary. Yeah. That didn't happen yeah. Anymore. Where's your paperwork? Um, and so, um, he said, you know, uh, I'm a coach for Tom Ferry. I actually, I actually listed and sold his house for him. Um, and he said, you know, Tom is having this short sale seminar and I know you've been doing them for the past couple of years. And this was in 08. It was really starting to, to, you know, we were doing about 50 a year and it was really becoming prominent in our area. And so I said, you know, I, I think I will. I'll go to this short sale seminar. And mm -hmm. so I was immediately just enamored with Tom Ferry. I mean, he was so relevant. He was really on it. He was young. He was putting in technology and really was doing what he needed to do to be on the forefront. And so the following year, we went to his summit. And I'll never forget, he had Gary Vaynerchuk in 2009. Wow. At his annual conference and Gary Vaynerchuk was telling us then to do video and damn it, I should have listened. Um, but um, that was how we got introduced to the Tom Ferry organization. And then the turning point for us when we had our explosive growth, um, I will say was two things. In 2014, uh, we signed up for Tom Ferry Team Plus Coaching. Okay. And we, we got Boomtown. Okay. And um, we then had a way to very systematically control the leads, know what was happening and be able to have accountability within our team on a whole nother level and yeah. also be able to track measure uh, our marketing at, at a different level. And so those two things combined is what exploded our growth. And so I, I can't say enough you know, about the Tom Ferry coaching organization. And like I said, Kyle, Tammy, the folks that are in, it's a very small group. Um, and we meet twice a year for masterminds. And, you know, you've got that caliber of people, which now, you know, we used to have to travel to do these things. And now the local collaboration through EXP between now I've got access to Daniel and Kyle and Chase Meyer, and now we've got Jay Kinder and Curtis Johnson and Michael Reese and all of these people that we have access to to really force multiply our businesses on a whole nother level is is probably been Kyle and Daniel and I were talking about this. The biggest surprise about coming to EXP and the thing that we now feel is the most important. Yeah. Yeah. That is so good that you said that. Like I, I, I've, that we never anticipated the community part no. of, of, of EXP until we actually lived it. And, and, um, like when you're talking about, like, I, I hope people understand, like when you talk about like Dan Beer, when you talk about Kyle Whistle, I mean, you're talking about people that, um, that do not not just a little bit of real estate, right? I mean, these guys do what two hundred million dollars a piece, probably worth yeah. of real estate each year. 
Yeah. Like these are some of the these are some of the Wall Street Journal's top real estate agents in the United States, right? And you're oh. you're plugging into those people. I mean, you could, you know, you I you and I both could we could text or, or call Dan Beer or Kyle Whistle right now, and you know, they would right. they would they would take our questions. And you just did not have that type of access no. uh, anywhere else, especially as an independent, right? Because like you talked about before, you guys were you said it nicely, you were frenemies, right? right. But you were competitive. He's not, he doesn't have, there's no benefit to him giving you anything though as a competitor, right? But right. It, at EXP, we all work together collaboratively, right? And and I mean, let's just call it like it is. Like you go to seminars, you go to conferences and people will give you eh, 70, maybe 80% of what they're doing, but they're not yeah. giving you the, the secret the sauce. Deep, deep, <laughs> like, they're not giving you the tactical, like, they're giving you the 30,000 foot view of, yeah. oh, this is how I run my team. No, this is open up my playbook. This is this is when we do our huddles. This is what we talk about. This is our training schedule. This is how we do this. This is how we do that. Um, you know, I've watched Chase Myers click funnel presentation like four times and it still blows my mind. I still don't get it. Um, but, you know, it's not oh, I run Facebook ads and here's the 30,000 foot view of how you do yeah. click funnels. No, this was, here's the ad I run. Here's how I do it. Here's how much money I spend. This is the message I send. This is my thank you email. Like, I'm he, writing that down like, just so you know. But that's just, Myers. that's just one example of the, the brain trust and the knowledge that we have been able to bring together that continues to blow my mind. Yeah. Like I have so many things I want to implement that now I'm like, you know, shiny object. Like, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a Picasso of an artist and I want to do all these things. Um, and so I have to have operators to bring me back down to, down to earth. But it's just, it's so super exciting to think that yeah. we're only six months into this. Where are we going to be six years? Holy like, cow. This is going to be phenomenal. Like the stuff I've learned from Tammy Pack just you know we were together at the exp conference and we all stayed in this haunted house which is a whole nother story um but we went to lunch the first day and we were masterminding so hard that we went back to the house got big post-it notes we didn't even go to the conference and we were there just masterminding all this stuff like it was just insane incredible but you know, Miles has now come on. Like, I've got so many scaling questions for Miles that it's not even funny. Like, mm -hmm. the caliber of brain trust and talent is just, it's exciting. And we just keep getting bigger and better. And the brightest in our industries, yeah. in, in this industry, just keep coming. And it's its so exciting. Yeah. It, it, what's the Jim Rohn quote? You are the sum of the, you are the, the sum of the five people that you hang around the most and, and like, mm -hmm. whoa, has EXP changed that? Right. If, and if you're, if you're the so smartest true. person in the room, you're on the, you're in the wrong room. Right? Yeah. I, I'm always the dumbest person in the room and that, that has been incredible. So if, if anyone, you know, this opportunity is not about, I mean, rev share is nice, stock options are great, but the ability to double, triple, 10 times your business by what you're going to learn from the people. And it's not just the people that are in your upline, it's the people that are in your downline. Like mm -hmm. the things I've learned from Lauren Taylor, Tammy Pack, like amazing women that have brilliant ideas and, if you, we all have strengths, right? But when you combine all these strengths, it's like, what was that cartoon? Like the Wonder League or or what? Uh, Justice League. Justice, Justice League, League. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You've got all the heroes that have their one power, but they all had to come together to fight an enemy, right? Yeah. Not one person could do it on their own. And so, you know, when you combine everyone's strengths, it's a pretty powerful thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, it is so good. I could talk to you literally probably for another hour or so. Oh God, I could talk to you for all all the rest of the day. <laughs> and, and, and and so I, I I think you know again when when I when I think of you and what you've done, I just think consistency. I think, man, you know, I I the the funny thing is is I intended I really wanted to dig into some of the more tactical stuff in your business, but 
when you started to share, you know, the story about, you know, uh, your, the challenges you've had over the last 18 to 24 months, I think that people will connect more to that. And so I just really wanted to let you go on that because it was just such good stuff. And so I, I you know, I want to say thank you uh, so much for being able to share that. Um, I'm excited to be on this journey with you. I want to, I, if, if, if people are interested, if, if, if they're, People that are watching this, um, that guy or that gal, that broker or that agent, um, and they have questions either about growing their business, right? Because I know you're willing to share, or they have questions about about EXP. Um, how can they connect with you? Uh, you know, I'll give out my personal cell phone number. It is 760-855-1424. Text me, call me. Uh, my email address is mary at my hyphen hometown realty.com instagram at mary maloney facebook um you know slash hometown realty check out our our web pages um or hometown veterans even um you know we're we're making a big expansion movement in the major military markets i'm super excited about that and everything that lauren taylor and and the rest of her crew are doing but you know i i'm happy to chat about you know, uh, the fear of, of change or the fear of failure or women in, in business or, you know, the I'm thinking about starting an indie brokerage. What am I not thinking about? Um, mm -hmm. That's always a great question. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to connect on any level. Um, even, even if you just want to talk about Rosé, I'm happy to do yeah. that, too. We'll jump on a Zoom call and have a glass of Rosé together. Half a billion dollars in real estate, guys. I would highly recommend plugging into Miss Mary. She is an incredible human being. Mary, hey, thank you so much for sharing this time thank with me you. and our audience. And I will definitely reconnect with you in the future. Thank you so much. I look forward to this journey that we're on. Bye, everybody. Absolutely. Bye.